JT Smith here at Bearcat Insider. I will start off this recap just saying rest in peace, Grandma Jenny, Virginia Daniel, my great grandma passed um, um, the prior Sunday. So uh, that's why I wasn't able to actually go to the game and cover it like I normally do. Um, but um, just uh, rest in peace to her. Um, I just want to start off that way. Um, but the Bearcats, they won their 23rd at home, beating UCF 60 to 50. And they won their 15th in a row, 11th in a row in the AAC. Uh, the Bearcats are now 22 and 2, 11 and 0 in conference, and they're rolling. Um, they had to face a mountain of a man in Taco Fall who had a double-double against the Bearcats, didn't miss anything, but they did call six turnovers on him. Um, he just affected the game a lot, and for them to still win by double digits is very good and very big for them. This shows how um, versatile this team is. Um, Kyle Washington, you know, Gary Clark, they took him outside of the paint. Um, also, Kwashi Moore, you know, Gary, um, Kyle Washington had a double-double also, and he made a few threes, and they had to go to a 2-3 just because um, Taco couldn't guard anybody, and that, um, in fact, it did help them slow the game down. But when Taco took a break, the Bearcats did a real good job in going to the paint. Um, Taco affected a lot of shots. Um, Gary Clark and um, Kyle Washington on floaters and you know shots that they normally would make um, didn't go in, but they still shot a pretty per good percentage. Um, those guys, um, uh, Jacob Evans had a real big game. Didn't score a lot, but he had four steals, and that's something that you know McCronin preaches on a daily basis. And he wants to he wants to deflect the ball and get turnovers. He called 16 turnovers all together. Um, real good team win. A lot of people might look at UCF and be like, oh, we should the Bearcats should have blew them out, but because of Taco Fall, he's not um, a pushover by any means. I mean, this guy, if he stays for two more years, he's, he's a true sophomore. If two more years they get a couple more pieces there, this, this team could be a real threat. And if they get in a, the tournament, this team could be a real threat. So this is a huge win. It just shows how uh, versatile this team is. Back in the past, they would have tried to have, they would have had to back it down against this guy and would have been into his wheelhouse. But now, because they have so many moving parts, so many moving pieces, they can stretch them out and uh, make them pay because of the size. Um, Justin Jennifer had a solid game. Um, I really like the lineup with him and Troy Copain together where you have two guys that could really distribute and shoot. Um, they did real well playing together. Um, this is a real solid game, man. Um, really can't knock um, the Bearcats for only scoring 60 points against a team with Taco Fall. Um, Quadri Moore played real solid in his limited minutes, as, a, as did Trey Scott. Um, Bearcats don't play until they face SMU on Sunday. Um, on the road, so um, that's going to be a big game. Two top 25 teams. If the Bearcats can win this game, they pretty much have the AAC on lock. I know Mick Cronin won't say that, but if they beat SMU, who is their main um, challenger, who only has one loss in the conference, they can win that game, then they will definitely have control and they'll be in the driver's seat. So um, just make sure you stay locked in the Bearcat Insider. I'm JT Smith, and I'm signing out.